Hello everyone, this is Nathan Bridges from Nathan's Nuggets and Tam with FAU Quirac Michael Johnson Jr. Thank you for joining me today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Anytime. I'll start my first question. How old were you when you started playing football? Uh, I think when I started playing, I think I was five. The first time I actually played like organized football like on a team, but I my parents weren't letting me get tackled, so. I had to start off in flag. So I played flag football, I think, for five and six. And then once I got to um, – once I got to age seven, they put me uh, in, in tackle football. So that's when I started. So at first, your parents wanted you like, – they were trying to keep you safe, like, with flag. Yeah, they just wanted to play it safe. <laughs> your dad was a quarterback too, right? Mm, he, um, he played in the Canadian League in the 90s. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you play any other sports? Uh, growing up, I played football, basketball, and I, and I ran track and field. Um, I stopped running track once I got to high school, and then I stopped basketball because my my junior year I ended up moving to Oregon. Oh wow! Um, yeah, so like I played basketball until then. I just didn't want to play two sports at a new school, so I just stuck with football. See, you did three sports, but then once you got to high school, you stopped, like, track and field, and then once you moved schools, you wanted to just do one sport, and since football is, like, your main. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you left California. Did I like California? I mean, so you left it? You left California? Yeah, I left um, – I lived in California from when I was, like, eight, eight until I think I was 16. See so you lived there for a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. I've lived in California all my life. Yeah, no, California is a good place to be. Mm -hmm. When did the recruiting process begin for you? I think the recruiting process began probably like I say eighth grade. Um, I started getting invites to these um, like the rivals camps, the the opening camps, those those things. Uh, I mean, I got my first legit offer I think and I, it was the freshman year uh, right after my football my freshman season but I started getting a little bit of notoriety in the eighth grade oh, that's crazy I start like, at my age yeah that was crazy which colleges did you get to talk to like in eighth grade um in eighth grade I think the call because like at that age you, the colleges can't call you so you would just meet them at like certain camps and things like that I remember I talked to um Coach Jonathan Smith, uh, when he was at Washington, he's now the head coach at Oregon State. I talked to him. Um, I talked to Coach Shaw, the head coach at Stanford. Um, I talked to him in eighth grade. I did a camp at Stanford. Um, and the cool thing about it being in eighth grade, I was always around the older guys. So I was a younger guy being around like a bunch of older guys. And so it was cool to like learn from like dudes like um, at the time, dudes like Tate Martell or dudes like Braxton Burmeister who were like big names like in on the West Coast while I got to like like see and like be around and like camps like that. I must have been really cool like Tate Martell like he was like the number one quarterback. Yeah it is that dude is nice. Was it when he was being filmed for QB1? Uh yeah, he was getting filmed for QB1. I don't think when I was around him, I don't think I was around him when that was happening. I think that was just his, like, senior season. So it wasn't, like, when you were around him. Did you get to talk to him? Mm -hmm. I actually got to talk to him when we were in high school. And also when when he was – his first uh, semester at Ohio State, he posted me when I went on a recruiting visit there. Oh, wow, that, that must have been cool. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. What was the experience like being an Elite 11 member? Oh, it was cool. I mean, um, one thing I think people don't realize about the Elite 11, we learn so much all about off the field. We learn a lot about life rather than just, like, it's not all football. Like, they teach us a lot about life, um, about, like, how to treat women the, the right way, how to handle yourself on social media, things like that. So. I took a lot away from that. It was also cool to be around like top quarterbacks, guys like that you see now, like like Spencer and guys like Bo, like guys who are like killing it right now. The little guys that you're like in the same in the same class with, in the same year with. So uh, I think it was all all good experience. 
So it was a great experience. Like they teach you more than just football. Like you get to learn about like that off the field stuff. Yeah. And so you got to be with like Spencer Rattler and like Bo Nix. Oh, that must have been cool. Yeah, that no, was cool. I mean, at the time, I mean, I was never like like starstruck by him or anything like that because we were all there together. But um, no, it was it was it was, it was cool. Um, just being able to compete with the top guys, which is which is really all a competitor wants. So just like getting to compete with some of the best. Yeah. What made you pick Penn State coming out of high school? Uh, I just thought the environment was really cool there. Um, the atmosphere there is crazy. Um, Coach Franklin was is a very good recruiter. Um, he recruited me really well, really hard. Um, there's just a lot of things that uh, it was a great education there. Um, great fan base, uh, great opportunity. Um, the whiteout is second to none um, from experiencing that, like in person. It's just crazy. So uh, I think that was what really drove me there. Um, so the environment, the atmosphere, and like, like Franklin, like you said, he's a good coach. And then like just like a wide out, I've seen it. Like it's crazy. Like they have that thing they always show when Michigan had to call a timeout before the game even started. Yeah, yeah, that was the that was my freshman year. Oh, really? You're there? I was there. I saw that happen live. <laughs> yeah. How loud was it? It was really loud. It wasn't necessarily because of the um, it wasn't really necessarily because of like. The crowd was already loud, but then they played um, that Mo Bamba song. Uh, and that, like, over there, that song is, like, everyone goes crazy. That song. So they played that song when, like, we were, like, when the defense was running on the field. And then that's when, the like, the crowd got even louder. So, like, that's when they had to call time out. That's when it, like, turned up. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, Happy Valley, they have, like, it's crazy all the stuff that they got there. Yeah, no, it's crazy. What was your biggest learning experience from your time at Penn State? I just think uh, one thing that I think uh, Coach Franklin and, and, and my other coaches there really helped me with was um, I think just preparation. Preparation is something that's like a really big deal and people don't necessarily see it unless you're, you're in like obviously like if you see like Tom Brady play on Sunday, you don't see like his – preparation throughout the week I think that was a big thing preparation and and just um just his core values of like competing in everything you do whether it's it's uh on the field whether it's in the classroom in like a video game anything like a competitor wants to win in everything so I I took that away from there so preparation like how you said like Tom Brady you see him come on to the field on Sundays and win but you don't see like his preparation going up to it and like a competitor, like you said, like wants to win anything you do, like video games, school, anything. Yeah, exactly. What made you decide to enter the transfer portal? It was just, uh, I think at the end of the day, you want to go somewhere where um, you you want to, you want to, obviously I wanted to play. And at, at Penn State, I think that it would have taken a couple, a couple more years for me to get on the field just with like, the guy who they had playing, um, Sean, they had him. Yeah, he has – he had, I want to say, two more years, but it ended up being three more years because of the COVID year. So then there's that. And at the time, there was another dude who was one class above me um, who was ahead of me. And uh, I think it would have been – it would have taken at least two or three years for me to really go on the field. And I think that um, someone who loves football, like I do, I think um, – I'm my happiest when I'm like playing. I feel like kind of like not playing is not necessarily as fun. So I wanted to go somewhere where um, I was going to have a shot to compete. Obviously, I don't want anything handed to me, nothing like promised or anything like that. But just somewhere I knew I was going to have a fair uh, a shot um, to compete. So uh, that drove me to FAU. So at Penn State, I you knew you would get your shot to play, but it wouldn't be like at the. It might take a little bit for you to get the chance to compete for the starting job because how the guys were like older than you. And yeah, the guys were older than me, and then also um, my true freshman year, the uh, the guy who was playing, he actually had a he had a good season, so he's playing pretty well. So, I mean, there was no reason for them to not play him anymore. So, I mean, I definitely understood it, but at the same time. I had to do what was uh what I thought was best for me at the time and best for uh my my mental. Um at the same time there's 
I, there's no ill will towards Penn State. I mean, I still have a great relationship with those guys. So um, I just wish them the best. So it's just the best situation for you and best thing for you to go to FAU. Mm, exactly. What's the process in the transfer portal like? Uh, I mean, it's a lot like like being recruited, actually. You get in the transfer portal and it's just kind of like recruiting all over again. What was kind of complicated with me uh, was definitely just um, of it being a COVID year. So no one had ever seen something like COVID before in their lives. So it was interesting because no one knew like how scholarships were going to be affected or anything like that. And at the same time, there was like a lot of, there's a lot of other things like there was like the Black Lives Matter protests and, and all that. So um, there was just so much going on outside of football that it was hard for people to really focus on football because there was just so many other things going on with like people's health. And at the same time, like, like the, like I guess the 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 heart of our nation, I guess things like that. Like just a lot of things going on at the time, and like COVID, like wasn't it like too they can't like actually like go and talk to you in person. Exactly, couldn't take any visits or anything like that. And then like with they gave everyone an extra year of eligibility, so they didn't know like how with the scholarships bringing the new players since something like seniors can stay. Yeah, like, for example, like, almost everyone at, at uh, FAU came back wow. for, for another year. So, like, I know at FAU, like, scholarships were, like, were super tight. What made you pick FAU? Uh, I think just my relationship I had with Coach Taggart and the coaching staff. Um, so, I had known Coach Taggart going back to um, Oregon – I actually had went to school with his son, um, and him and I were, were, were really close. So um, I just know him as a person, not just as a coach. So I, I trusted him, and I knew that um, he was going to give me a, an opportunity. So you already knew Willie Taggart. Was it when you moved to Oregon since he used to coach Oregon? Um, yes, I did. And so you knew him as a person, not just like as a coach. So you already, and he knew he'd give you a fair opportunity. Yep. Doesn't his son, his son went to FAE, right? Or committed there, right? Yeah, his son's a, his son's a, one of the quarterbacks on the team. Um, yeah, his son's a pretty good player. What's it been like playing for Willie Taggart so far? It's been good. It's honestly like, I learned, I've learned a lot um, being coached by him. Um, he touches on a lot of things, like, with football, but at the same time, he's on a lot of things, like, like outside of football. Like, he's always going to tell us, like, if we have a good practice or if we have a good, like, scrimmage, like, don't mess it up with having, like, a bad weekend or something like that. Like, stuff like that will change your life. So, all that is, is just, it's just knowledge that you, you get from him. So, it's been really good. All at the same time, as a – as just a person, he's very approachable. Like, he's extremely approachable. That's one of the biggest things I've learned since being in a – since being here. Like, he's one probably one of the most approachable coaches I think I've ever had. So, you can approach him and, like, just talk to him easily. And, like, he teaches you, like, like for instance, like, yesterday, like, don't mess it up with the bat – after the game, you say, like, don't mess it up with the bat week or anything. Exactly. Are you competing to be the starter currently, or have you been named the starter? Uh, currently, I'm still I'm still, I'm still competing. I don't think they're gonna name a starter until uh, probably during fall camp. So um, currently, I'm just uh, competing, trying to get better every day. And I think that in spring, I think I I I played um, I made good strides. I think not necessarily just saying like I'm like the best one or anything like that, or I should start. I'm just saying like I think I got better. Um, every day and I think I improved and I think that's this that's true for all the quarterbacks I think like us as a unit us as a group um as an offense also I think we got better uh during spring so I mean, that was a good thing it's like it was good that you personally just got better every day in the offense and all the quarterbacks and so I probably before like the first game like in fall camp they'll announce the starter 
Mm. I was like, like before you play Florida. Yeah, before we play Florida, probably. I, I would assume. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not. I'm not the coach or anything like that, but I assume. I know you just played your spring game yesterday. How was it? It was good. Um, I was I was on the, I was on the winning team, so that was good. That was a that was good. I think um, as a team we played well. We came out with the win. Um, that's really all you could ask for. So I was I was happy. So it was good just and always to be on the winning team. Like how you mentioned earlier, a competitor always wants to win. So you got to be on the winning team. Yeah, for sure. This upcoming season, you'll be playing Florida at the Swamp. What kind of opportunity do you think that is for you and the FAU program? Uh, I think it's a big opportunity. Um, obviously, we, we, we're excited about it. We're excited to, to go to a place that, that is super crazy, like, like the Swamp. Um, so we're just working towards that, um, trying to get better every day. So we put ourselves in the best best position to win when, um, when that day comes. So um, definitely, we're all looking forward to it. We're we're all excited about it. It's going to be a it should, it should be a, a very good good challenge for us. So it'll be a great experience to play at somewhere like this one for like the environment's crazy, and just mm -hmm. like fun to compete against those guys. Yeah, for sure. What are your goals for your career at FAU? Um, definitely, I obviously want to leave here. I want to leave the place better than it was when I came here. I want, I want to be able to make an impact on people. Um, I think that's the biggest thing for me. Um, obviously, I want to be a great player. I want to win a lot of games here, but I think I just want to impact people. I want to impact people in a positive way. Just, just leave, uh, things in a better place than, than, than the way I found them. I think that that would help a lot. I just want to be a positive light to, to others. So that, that's my main goal. So to leave things better than it was when you first came in and to be a positive impact to people. Mm -hmm. Who was your favorite football player as a kid? Uh, when I was really young, when I was probably like three, four, those years, it was Michael Vick. Um, then when Cam Newton came into the league, uh, Cam Newton, and I say right now, right now Cam Newton is my favorite. So when you're really little, like Michael Vick, and then Cam Newton, and once he started to like get famous and everything, like his MVP season. Yeah, no, that was crazy. That was I remember. Crazy season. I remember that, like everyone doing the dab, Superman, and everything because of him. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. Do you try to model your game after anyone? Uh, not really. Um, obviously, I, I'll try to take bits and pieces if I see something in someone's game that I like. But um, at the end of the day, I just try to be myself. Um, just try to be Michael Johnson Jr. So, uh, not really. So, at the end of the day, you just want to play your own game and develop your own, like, Michael Johnson Jr. And then, but, like, if you see something, like, you might, like, add it to your game, but make it better and, like, make it your own thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How would you describe yourself off the field? Um, I'm really laid back. Um, laid back, love playing video games, um, hanging out with, hanging out with my friends, listening to music. Um, yeah, I'm besides that, I'll be the word I'd say laid back, just off the field, just always kind of chilling. It's like laid back, you're always like chilling and playing on the game and like hanging out with your friends. Yeah, yep. Then the last question I have is for fun. You get to take any three NFL players to dinner. They can be past or present. Who are you taking? Uh, definitely Michael Vick. Uh, Cam Newton, of course. And Lamar Jackson. So you got all quarterbacks. Yeah, there's just so much I would want to ask them. If I went to dinner with them, I'd like – I'd have a similar sheet to – like you like your question sheet, like I'd write stuff down. I like stuff I don't want to ask them and things like that. So you would also have like stuff you can ask them and like gain experience from them. Mm -hmm. Yep. All good quarterbacks. And I don't, I don't I never really watched Michael Vick play, but did he win an MVP also? I'm not sure if he ever won. I think he did. I think he may have won an MVP. I'm not sure. 
Maybe when he was with Atlanta. I know he got comeback player of the year. I think it might have been his first year with Philadelphia or that year he played in Philadelphia. But um, I would have to check. I don't know if he got an MVP. I know Cam for sure has gotten an MVP. I know Lamar. Didn't Lamar Lamar got MVP? Yeah, he year. got it. Um, not this just past year, but the year before that. Yeah. Because then if he did, then all three of them would be MVP's winners. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Those are all the questions I have. No problem. Thanks for having me. Anytime.